Hey everyone, welcome to Casey 3D Sparks. Today we're going to be going over how to add textures to your dungeon tiles. So if you haven't seen the video already, I will put the link in the description below. And um, yeah, you can watch that, how to make these beautiful tiles. But today I'm going to be adding a step before you do that video. So I would recommend watching that first, even though like it's really quick. So watch that first and then you can once you have down like okay this is the general process you can figure that out um, you can try adding the textures to it before that and then doing the grid as well so I'm just gonna go ahead and start with a fresh file here so that way we can just look at our textures so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this cube there's a couple ways we can go about adding textures to our tiles. So of course the first way would be just to get your mesh that you want which I like to start with a plane for this one and you can go in and subdivide it a ton and then sculpt it out which sounds like a pain in the butt and it would take forever and I don't know about you but I want something simpler and something I can just whip out really quickly before I have my D&D session. So Instead of doing that, there's two methods I'm going to go over really quickly, and you can compare them and see which one you like better. Personally, the second option I'm going to go over, I like better, but that's just my personal preference. So we'll see what you like, and then you can go ahead, do that, print it out, and have fun. So first one I'm going to show you is just using the regular old displacement modifier. So what you want to do first is go, go ahead and go into edit mode, hit W, subdivide, and you're going to want to up that number of cuts to, let's just do 20 for now. 20 should be fine. Tab out of that because that's all we're going to do in edit mode. The rest is going to be over in our panel over here. We will go to our modifier, panel, tab, thing and we're gonna go ahead and we are going to subdivide that even more let's just do like maybe four or so uh, we're not going to render it out but I like to just keep the numbers the same in case if I feel like doing so then we will go ahead and add our displacement modifier which is right here in the deform section awesome nothing happened it just moved up off the grid <laughs> because we haven't done anything. So it's going to have a texture panel here and I don't have any texture set so it just didn't do anything. What we'll want to do is hop over to the texture tab and we'll create a new texture. From that texture usually it's going to be automatically on clouds which is not what we want <laughs> even though that looks kind of cool. We're going to go ahead and do image or movie. For the image that we're going to do, I found a website that has a ton of free textures. It's called wildtextures.com. I searched over here stone and it comes up with free stone textures. So you can scroll through here, find, you know, any stone textures. I'm going to be using this natural stone tile wall. But of course, pick out what you want. Obviously, they have brick and all kinds of other cool things that you can use. So I grabbed a ton of these while I was here the other day. But yeah, pick out your favorite one. And we'll go ahead, open that up. So I just have it on my desktop here. And once you do that, it already got over into your displacement modifier. And it looks crazy, right? Look at this. This is actually kind of scary. Like if you touch that, your finger will immediately start bleeding. Anyway, so once you have that, the strength is actually way too high. That's why it's going haywire. So let's turn that down. Um, 0.5. Mm, still way too much. 0 0.05. Better. Okay. Um, but it still looks weird, right? It's very bumpy and just not what you need it to be. So I wonder actually if we turn it down even more. 0 0.01. Okay, kind of looks like a brick, but it doesn't jut out. It's still pretty flat. So we'll leave it as is, and I'm going to go ahead and go over the second method that I recently discovered, and hopefully you guys like it. So I'll leave that there. I'm just going to push it over to the side real quick, and I'm going to add another plane in. And we are going to start out actually relatively the same way. So go in here to edit mode, hit W, subdivide. 
and up it to 20 again. Okay, tab out of edit mode because that's all we need. And we're going to follow still the same process, so subdivision surface, up that, oops, and a displacement modifier. However, for the texture for this, we're not going to use the same texture as this one. We are actually going to go to a different program called Crazy Bump. So this is another thing that I downloaded. It is free to download, but I guess if you want to actually like use it professionally and use the textures for commercial use, that kind of thing, or personally, that kind of thing, um, you can buy a license. I have not bought one yet. I only am using the free version so far because I'm just going to, you know, print out some stuff and not <laughs> sell them anyway. So once you have it downloaded, just go ahead, open that up, go to your options real quick, make sure the Y axis is up. That's the only thing I've noticed that you actually have to change. So once you do that, you can go over and click the open button. We're just going to do this first one. Open photograph and file. Go to the stone texture that we want. Wait a second. I know it looks like it's not doing anything, but trust me, it's thinking. <laughs> uh, so once that's done, it's going to come up with two different options. So it's just inverted differently. So once you're like, okay, yeah, I want the stones out and the grid lines, no, the grout in, go ahead, click that one, unless you want it opposite for some reason. Now to come up on a ball, I notice it's kind of hard to look at on a ball. Sometimes it's easier to look at on a box since we're going to be looking at it on a flat surface anyway. So you can move it around kind of like, you know, just click and grab. Awesome. So all we're going to be worrying about is the displacement. So for that, go ahead and just up the depth of it really high, make it more dramatic. You can up the normals too, it kind of helps as well, but that's up to you. Figure out where you want to have this. So I want it as dramatic as possible because my printer is not very detailed. I need it to be as dramatic as possible. Awesome, so once you have that figured out, we're just gonna go to this save button hit save displacement to file because we don't need any of this other tab stuff going on. And we'll think about it. We'll hit save. Awesome. Close that out because we're done with it. Go over here to add a new texture again. Open up your displacement. It just adds, you know, it has the same file name but adds a disp to the end. And again, it's going crazy, but you can already see like, oh, all right, there might be something going on. Go back over to our modifier panel and let's turn on the strength again. So I did 0.5 first, still way too strong, 0 0.05. Ooh, okay, yeah, see, that actually looks like something. Um, honestly, though, it's still kind of blocky. I think I'm going to go ahead and tab in and do another subdivide. Yeah, I like that. Pretty dramatic, awesome, looks like brick. I mean, I know it has some funky spots, but my printer is not perfect anyway. So this would be awesome to try and test print and just see what happens. And this is the easiest way I found, like really, really quick and simple, just to like pop out a texture, print it out, see what happens, awesome, you're done. So way faster than trying to go into sculpt mode, carve out all these little grout lines, add your stones to make them actually look like real stones and not just blocks, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I want you guys to test this method out. Let me know what you think. Obviously, it's not perfect, but it's definitely a nice, quick and dirty way to get it done. That way you can just start printing your tiles and having it ready to go. So if we go ahead and look at them side by side, you can see now why I definitely like this one better. If you like this way better, perfect, awesome, glad it works for you. That way you don't have to 
um, get crazy bump or anything like that. But personally, I'm gonna try this out, see what happens. If you guys have a better way, let me don't let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and just let me know what you think. Can't wait to see you guys next week.